Hey folks, so, so far I haven't really had you watch any videos yet in this uh, second unit, I apologize, but here we are. Um, you've seen a few things already, uh, for example, scatter plots, which can look like this, and we're going to talk more about them later, but a scatter plot kind of shows a general trend. Um, it tells you what's going on. So, you know, a scatter plot like the one we're seeing right here, it kind of has a trend kind of going this way. And uh, you're going to learn later, this thing here is called the line of best fit. But anyway, we're not going to, we're not really talking about that right now. I'm just going to get rid of all these dots. <laughs> See them disappearing? Here's what you kind of need to know um, for now. Um, first of all, you already know that this is called the x-axis. And this over here is called the y-axis. You've learned a little bit, bit about plotting. Whenever you see something like 3 and 5, you know that the x part comes first and the y part comes second. So you're going across for 3 and you're going up 5. So far so good, right? Okay. A few more things. When you're plotting uh, a relationship between two things, for example, uh, uh, let's see, shots taken. Okay, so if you're playing basketball and you're talking about points and the shots taken. Okay, I'm not a basketball player, but um, what I do know is that you will get no points if you don't take any shots. It's kind of an inspirational saying, right? If you don't try, you won't get anything back. <laughs> but anyway, what I want to make clear here is that the y-axis, what you write down here as a title, this part always depends on this part. This part depends on this part. Points depend on the shots taken. Okay? So this part is called, and you, if you're writing notes, you could write this down. This is called the dependent variable. Okay? And the part down here is called the independent. variable. Okay, so for example, let's think of another situation. Instead of basketball, let's think about, let's see, I'm just going to erase all this here. And heck, I'm even going to move this over a bit. Isn't that nice? You couldn't do this on chalkboards. All right, there we go. So let's think of another situation. Um, uh, how far you can run, how far, how many kilometers you can run in time. Okay, so how far can you go in five minutes? Okay, uh, as time continues this way, if you keep moving, your distance will keep moving this way. If you slow down, it kind of goes like this. If you speed up, it kind of goes like this. And if you stop, does time stop? No. Your distance stops, so you don't, you don't actually go any further. Because over here, you'd have like, you know, 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet, 40 feet, 50 feet, etc. If you're in the States, you talk about feet. In Canada, we might say meters. But anyway, if you stop, the line would just go like this. So how far you go depends on the time. Um, when time is zero, you haven't gone anywhere. So actually, when time is zero, then your kilometers would also be zero. Is that kind of making sense? Anyway, um, there's a question that you're going to be dealing with. Uh, if you read on page 33, you'll see that um, hmm, there's two things. There's the height of the, there's a ball dropping. There is how high the ball is dropped, and there's also the rebound height. So you have to ask yourself, does the height of the ball depend on the rebound, 
or does the rebound depend on the height that the ball was dropped? Well, that's what sounds best to me. Okay? The rebound of the ball depends on how high you drop the ball. So the height. Okay? If you if you drop the ball very high, the rebound's going to be nice and high. Okay? So the higher you go here, the higher the rebound will be. Okay? And there's a chart and you'll notice um, you'll notice that the chart is actually a scatter plot and it's going to go up like this. Okay? Um, is there anything else I need to talk to you about with regards to what you're about to do as a practice? Hmm. You're going to have a situation with an ice cube. Okay? You're going to have temperature and time. So the temperature of a glass of water and the time. So you drop an ice cube in. Okay, I'm going to tell you something important here. Time is almost always independent. Time does not depend on us. It just keeps ticking away. We can't stop it, right? On some movies, they're able to stop time, but we just can't do it, right, in real life. So if you have t a situation where you have temperature of a glass of water and time, time is going to go down here on the x-axis, okay? There's another little hint I want you to remember for your quiz. Um, one way to remember also which one is dependent and which one's independent. Don't we, I'll draw a little picture here. Here's, here's us. Don't we depend on the earth? Okay, well, there's the earth. Don't we depend on the earth in order for us to survive? Well, the earth, you could say, is like the ground. So in order for us to stand, there's us, we have to depend on the ground. So we depend on the ground. We depend on the earth. Here's the flat ground. And I guess we are the y-axis. And we depend on the ground. Okay. I hope this explanation hasn't confused the heck out of you. But remember, dependent variable goes here. Independent here. And you're going to be dealing with a lot of different graphs, trying to figure out uh, what what the graph is doing, and also telling me how to draw a certain type of graph if they ask you. Okay? So good luck with this. Make sure you ask questions if you're confused. Okay? Take care.